Nice and simple. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a separate level that's gonna act as our main menu. Inside your content browser, I'm just gonna put this in the same spot as my other level. So I'm just gonna go to third person maps and then I'm gonna right click and create a new level. And I'm gonna call this level main menu. When I double click on this, it's gonna ask me to save what I'm currently working on. So I'll save that and then it will load this black level here. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna create a new game mode that's going to be our main menu game mode to help assist us here. So I'll right click blueprint class game mode base and I'm gonna call this my main menu game mode. Now when I open up into this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say that for the default pawn class, I want none because I don't wanna actually spawn anything here and then everything else should be okay. And then I'm going to compile, save, close. Then from here, I'm going to go into world settings. If you can't see world settings, then I would recommend going window and then clicking world settings. That'll bring this little page up here. And then I'm going to change my game mode override to be my main menu game mode. So now what we can see here is when I hit play, I'm in the abyss and no pawn spawns. This is what we want for the main menu. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and create a different widget. And I'm gonna open up my widgets folder and I'm going to right click, go to user interface and then hit widget blueprint. Then choosing my user widget, this one is going to be called my main menu widget. And I'll double click this to open it up. So now we're gonna go and begin building our hierarchy for this widget. The first thing that we need is going to be called a canvas. Very similar to our scoreboard, we're gonna add that canvas in. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need two different buttons. So I'm going to make two different children from our canvas that are just two different buttons here. And then next, each of those buttons, I want to have some sort of text. So I'm going to add text as a child to each of my buttons here. Then from here, I'm just going to make things more readable. First, button 55 is going to become my game start button. And button 96 is going to become my quit button. Now inside the game start text, I'm going to change this to be my text just to make that a little bit easier to read. And I'm going to go down here and change the text component to just simply be called game start. And then for quit, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to change text block over to quit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now align and create these buttons with a little more precision here. So starting with game start, I wanna go and I'm going to anchor this button to the middle of the screen and I'm going to then reset my X and Y position so that it kind of follows me to the middle of that screen there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my alignment to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so that it properly sits in the middle of that anchor. The next thing we can do is we can change our position. So let's say I want this button to sit higher above our anchor. So I'm just gonna move that to about there. And then I'm going to click this little size to content button so that it automatically makes my button a little bit happier. Next, we're gonna do the same thing to quit. So I'm gonna go into quit. I'm going to anchor to the middle, reset both of these, and then I'm going to click my size to content and I'm going to drag it below. And now you'll notice this is a little bit of an offset here. So what I'm going to do just to make things a little better is add in my 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and now we have our two buttons here. The next thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add in an image because I like things to look pretty. And I'm going to add this image to be a child of my canvas. And inside of this image, we're going to do a few different things. Now we're going to navigate over to appearance and we can see here this thing called brush. If I open up brush, we can choose an image, and the image that I'm going to choose is the same as my background for my Flappy Bird. So I'm going to choose my Flappy Bird sprite. And then what I can do from there is I can just make this the same size as my canvas here. Now what you can see now is I've completely deleted all of those buttons. In order to change this, we can go and we can change the Z order of our image so that it sits behind our buttons. So now we can see here with a Z order of negative one, our background comfortably sits in the background, whereas our buttons stand proudly on top. So now that we've got our actual widget kind of set up here, we're going to give it some backbone. To do this, we're going to go and click on our game start button and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom here where all the different fun functions exist. And I'm going to click this little plus button next to the on clicked event. That's going to bring up this fancy little blueprint here. Now, just to make sure I can do this all in one fell swoop, I also am going to wanna to have an on click event for my quit button. So I'm going to click on quit, I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom and I'm also going to click on clicked for that as well because all of these different functions exist in the same blueprint here. So when we click on our quit button, what do we want to happen? We want to quit. So when I search quit, good news, there's an easy reference to that, we can quit our game. So that was easy, surely game start will be harder. Well, kind of. So whenever we click on game start, what we're going to do is we're going to call an open level by object reference. This lets us choose what level we want to load. 
So I'm going to click this little drop down and what level do I want to load? Well, I think it's called third person map. Yeah, I think that's the one. So I want to load third person map whenever I go and have this occur. So then from there, if I hit compile and save, that will kind of save my changes. And I'm just going to throw this out of the way for now. So now we have to actually make this main menu appear. To do that, I'm going to add it into the level directly. So if I hit this little blueprint ish looking button here and I hit open level blueprint, it will bring up my levels blueprint. And here it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to say when we begin playing, we are going to need to create a widget. Which widget are we going to create? Well, this time we're going to be creating our main menu widget. And then after that's done, we're just going to add this to the viewport. And we're gonna make sure that we're actually giving the return value or the widget we created over to our viewport to be added. Compile, save, throw this off to the side, and now let's hit play here. Well, that's looking tasty. The background's obviously not ideal, but overall that things are moving in the right direction here. Now this might come down to an issue of resolution. When I hit these three dots here and I hit run as a standalone game, let's see what happens. And we can see that if we're running it as a standalone window, everything looks proper, but we're perfectionists here. So if I reopen this main menu widget and I can close out of my world for now, we're now going to go back into our designer and we can see that, you know, maybe dragging and dropping to the end of what was available to our canvas wasn't the right play. Let's click on our image and let's change our anchor point. And let's change our anchor to be the entire screen. We can then go and reset all of our different offsets here. And then we'll go and just carefully adjust them to get back to that point, just so that it's nice and precise for us. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. So now with this being bound to the entire screen, let's compile and save once more and hit run as a selected viewport. We can now see that this is now properly matching our size. Now to test our buttons, when I hit quit, things quit. That's ideal, that's what we wanted. And then when I go and hit game start, we can see we load our level. But things are a bit awkward. You can see there that my mouse appeared for a second. So let's run back through that one more time. When I hit play here, we can see that my mouse is still visible on screen. Is there a way that we can adjust this? And the answer is yes. So we're gonna go back into our main menu widget here and we're gonna go back into our graph. We're gonna add a couple extra nodes here that are going to make our lives a lot easier. So first I'm gonna zoom out and I'm going to scroll up to this event construct here. This is saying that when this widget is made, please do this. In order to deal with our mouse, we do want to set up a couple things. First, we do want to use our mouse within this widget. First, we don't really need to drag off of this yet. We need to get a reference to our player controller and we can do that by saying get player controller. And once we drag off of this, we are going to go and we're going to look for something that's going to let us to show our mouse or not. So when I type in show mouse, we can see that we have the ability to set that with this node here. And if I connect these, now we are saying that whenever we start constructing this widget, do we want to show the mouse cursor? The answer is yes, we do want to show the mouse cursor. And then after we set our mouse cursor, we are going to set the input mode. And we want this to only change for our UI. And we are basically going to say, please use this player controller for our input mode within this menu. Now, this is all well and good, but now we need to make sure that things restore to normal whenever we're actually going into our game. And we're going to do a very similar process down here. First, we need to get a reference to our player controller again. Then from here, we're going to set our mouse cursor again. And once we connect those, this time we do not want to show our mouse cursor anymore. And then just like before, we're now going to set our input game mode and we're going to make sure this is now for the game only and we're going to go and we're going to connect our player controller there so now nice and simply we're going to have this system that whenever we're creating our widget we're going to say please use the mouse and let the mouse be used for ui but whenever we go ahead and click on game start we're going to get rid of that mouse so that things look normal so compile save close hit play here we can see our mouse is good i can click around everything's fantastic and when i hit game start my mouse disappears and i'm playing my game as expected so that's a nice good main menu for you to use whenever you want the basic functionality but not necessarily anything much deeper